shootout! That's right, partner. The guns are blazing in the West. Big Ten style. It's Purdue and Wisconsin. Gene Cady, the former football player, has stamped his tough blood and gut style on the boilers as Purdue drives its way toward the Final Four. The enthusiasm has never been greater for Wisconsin. The Badgers have written into the Old West, smoked the opposition, and point toward Indy. Two old gunslingers, one last fight. It's high noon in Albuquerque. Picture perfect day in Albuquerque, New Mexico, site of the West Regional Final. Inside the pit, two Big Ten teams battle for a trip to the Final Four. Eighth seeded Wisconsin, sixth seeded Purdue. And the bracket in the West Wisconsin defeating LSU, Purdue defeating Gonzaga. The winner of this headed to Indy. Welcome. I'm Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Surprise, surprise. At the beginning of the tournament, who would have thought that Wisconsin and Purdue would be playing for a trip to the Final Four? And for the Purdue Boilermakers, they're led by their five seniors, two in particular. Gus, coaches put a tremendous premium on experience in this time of the year. How could you have two better senior leaders than Brian Cardinal and Jerron Cornell? Jerron Cornell has had a solid NCAA tournament. He's been able to use his size to post up inside. He's actually rebounded the ball very well. And Brian Cardinal, his offensive numbers may be down, but his scrappy diving style really is an inspiration to his teammates. As for Wisconsin, they've been inspired all season, and especially in the NCAAs, by their defense. Their defense has been outstanding, holding opponents to under 53 points a game. But what they've done in particular is done a great job keeping the ball from going inside. Andy Kowski has done very well in the post, and then the double teams out on the perimeter have forced a 19 turnover per game average. And they've really done a great job cutting off the opposition's leading score. They've done it three times already. They'll try to do it again today. So coming up, Wisconsin-Purdue, fourth meeting of the season. The Badgers have won two. Welcome back to the pit. Bob King Court moments away from the beginning of the West Regional Final. Wisconsin and Purdue and these two teams, they've met three times. Purdue winning the opener, but Wisconsin has won the last two. And for more, let's go to the third member of our team, Beth Mowens. Gus, Purdue, and Wisconsin are blue-collar brethren of the Big Ten. They know each other very well, and they carry on their sibling rivalry with a lot of hard work and mutual respect. Wisconsin head coach Dick Bennett told me that whatever advantage his team has had so far in the tournament is now gone because Purdue can match their intensity, while the Boilers' sentiments are best expressed by assistant coach Todd Foster, who's a rodeo clown during the summer and spends his free time fighting bulls. So I asked him, what's tougher to fight, the bull or the badgers? And he said, definitely the badgers, because there's only one bull, and eventually he stops coming after you. Gus? All right, Beth, so a Saturday afternoon Big Ten special. The winner heading to the Final Four. One game, 40 minutes, one more win. The Final Four. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet, Delta Airlines, Solomon Smith Barney, and by Microsoft. And welcome back to the pit. 18,018 in attendance, a sellout crowd to see the West Regional final between Wisconsin and Purdue. Dick Bennett, head coach for the Badgers, five and six record versus Purdue. He's coached this team to its best season ever, back to back years. 20 win seasons and the lineup Linton, Vershaw, Kowski up front and to the backcourt. It's John Bryant and Mike Kelly, maybe the best defensive guard in the nation. 
Gene Cady, 20th year at Purdue, 30 and 7 record versus Wisconsin. And a look at the starters for the Boilers. Brian Cardinal, better known as Citizen Payne, along with McQuay and Mike Robinson. And in the backcourt, Jerron Cornell, who's been leading the Boilers in scoring, and Carson Cunningham. The road to the The road for Wisconsin, Fresno State, Arizona, LSU. Big wins against Arizona, number one seed. LSU was a number four. And for the Boilers, in the first round, they defeated Dayton, followed by Oklahoma, a number three, and Gonzaga, a number 10. Today's officials, Tim Higgins, Tony Green, and Dick Paparo. Great atmosphere here in Albuquerque. And what should we pay attention to first as this game begins? Gus, the Wisconsin defense tries to make you play slowly by making you think quickly. They try to pressure you so you treat the ball like it's 600 degrees and pass it before you're ready. Purdue's got to be patient on offense and tough on defense. Carson Cunningham into the front court for the Boilers. Now Cornell guarded by Kelly. And a classic Wisconsin man to man defense. Mike Robinson, nice wheel inside, can't get the bounce. And Linton with the rebound. Here comes Mike Kelly, defensive player of the year in the Big Ten last year. Had five steals in their game against LSU. Bryant off the screen, and that's a good sign for the Badgers starting off hitting his first shot. Wisconsin only shot 38% overall in their win against LSU. And Dick Bennett very relieved to see that first one go down. And a steal. There's Kelly stepping into the passing lane. He's got great anticipation. Fershaw dumps it down. Kowski block. McQuay picked up by Cunningham off the dribble. And the lay -in. One of the things that Purdue has to avoid, and they just avoided it very well, you can't give Wisconsin layups. You can't let them have dunks. Make them shoot the ball from the perimeter. Badgers beat LSU 61-48 Thursday. John Bryant, 16 points. They forced 23 turnovers. Loose ball inside, knocked out of bounds. We head the other way. And Purdue can get it done on the defensive end as well. Kowski does a great job getting position, but McQuay comes from nowhere to block the shot. Three guys around Kowski. Somebody's got to be open, and he has got to recognize that. 3-2. Opening moments of the first half of play. Purdue won the opener. 63 to 52 on January 15th when these two teams played. The Wisconsin came back as Cunningham takes the deep three and buries it. Wisconsin won 55-45 during the regular season in Madison, January 26th, then 78-66 in the Big Ten tournament. Mike Robinson out playing against Vershaw. Vershaw played very well in the wins against Purdue, scoring 22 points in that Big Ten matchup, that Big Ten tournament matchup. Vershaw puts it on the floor, picked up by Cardinal. Knocked away Robinson. And Mike Robinson had a great defensive game against Richie Fromm and Gonzaga. And this is showing you Mike Robinson's defensive versatility, guarding a perimeter guy like Richie Fromm. Now he's matched up against a post guy like Vershaw. Kelly, eight to shoot, high pick and roll, down the lane, the dump to Kowski, traveling. And the Purdue defense really doing a nice job defending the basket. They're helping on those screens inside. They're collapsing when Wisconsin gets penetration, and that's what they want to do, is to force Wisconsin to shoot the ball from the outside. And the Badgers, they don't get that many possessions a game. They cannot afford to turn the ball over. Purdue coming off a 75-66 win over Gonzaga. Four players in double figures, led by Cornell, who had 18 points on 5 of 13 shooting. Now Cunningham, stop and start. Rebound goes to Kowski. You just have to really be tough on offense against Wisconsin. You want to time your cuts the way you want it to work. You don't want to let the Wisconsin defense force you into moving more quickly than you want to. Brian, quick release. This young man, John Bryan, a senior from Plymouth, Minnesota, transferred 
from Division II St. Cloud State. He was the third leading Division II three-point scorer in the country, but he said he wanted to give the Big Ten and big-time Division I basketball a try. Six points for Bryant. Now Cardinal. Robinson with a crease, reverse. Two layups so far for Purdue, and they've got to feel pretty good about their ability to get inside the Wisconsin defense. Purdue has held the opposition in this tournament to 16% shooting from beyond the three-point arc, but Wisconsin has made their first two. Bryant again, got a crease and buries it. First three, three for three. Wow, and again, we just said, Purdue's been doing an outstanding job defending the three-point shooter, but they're gonna have to do a better job against John Bryant. Nine points for Wisconsin, nine points for Bryant. Cornell. Down the lane. Knocked away and stolen. Kelly got a hand on it. Great recovery by Kelly. He did get a hand on the ball, Gus, but the key was to get down and cut off Cornell before he could get to the basket. That's quickness that people don't usually give Kelly credit for. Cornell's got to get up on Bryant. Cornell's problem has been when Bryant's running off these screens. They're doing a great job screening for Bryant. First shot. Reach in foul on Cardinal. John Bryant, the Badger Bomber, lighting up the scoreboard here in Albuquerque. Right here, John Bryant is setting a screen, and so Jerron Cornell has to guard that. Then watch as Bryant runs off a screen. Cornell caught on the inside, doesn't get back quickly enough, and Bryant nails the three-point shot. And Bryant has really played very well in this tournament three-point shooting. Nothing like that first round with seven against Fresno State, but certainly he's capable of putting up big numbers. What's amazing is Purdue has done a great job defending the three-point line against Dayton, Oklahoma, and Gonzaga. A combined nine of 56, 16% already. Bryant has a third. Maynard Lewis in the ball game now going to try to run after John Bryan and now Dwayne Dwayne and he's also a very fine three-point shooter. Bershaw guarded by McQuay. Drop step ball fake off the window down it. Bershaw has played extremely well this season against the Boilermakers and part of the problem no help. bershaw has got a couple of inches on McQuay on the inside. McQuay really looking for the block shot, goes for the pump fake. McQuay's got to stay on the ground until Vershaw commits to the shot. Three games versus Purdue. Averaging 15 a game, misses the free throw. 15 12 to go in the first half of play. Wisconsin with an 11 7 lead. Maynard Lewis in the game, dribbling the basketball for the Boilers. Now cutting in. Thus far, Wisconsin has prevented guys like Cardinal and Robinson from handling the ball very much in scoring opportunity. Cardinal in particular hadn't handled it inside. Lewis inside finds Robinson. Nice looking play. The dribble penetration is what got it done that time for Purdue. Lewis with some good quickness to the baseline. And anytime you force the defense to react, you get an opportunity on the inside if the rotation doesn't come quite in time. Mike Robinson with four points at eight against Gonzaga. Al Kelly looking for Vershaw. Tie up on the baseline. Out of bounds. I think they're going to call a foul inside against McQuay. Vershaw really working very hard on the inside against McQuay. This is just a great job by Vershaw using that bulk, and McQuay gets his arm caught with Vershaw's arm, so that's now two fouls on McQuay. And even though Purdue's got some pretty good depth, foul problems could be a key to this ball game. Rodney Smith into the game, along with John Allison for the Boilers in white. Up Kelly reverses. Dwayne Dwayne downtown. And so far, the Badgers are stroking it from the three-point line. They are four for four, five of seven from the field. Inside, Allison turns, triple team, turns it over. 
You cannot put the ball on the floor inside against Wisconsin unless you're going to be very quick and get to the basket. Allison dribbled it without really accomplishing anything except to lose the ball. Third turnover of the game. Bryant baseline off the glass and the follow. Kowski. And I don't think Dick Bennett was happy with that shot selection by Bryant. A much too, much too tough a shot too early in the shot clock. 16-9. Wisconsin and Kowski's doing a great job keeping the ball out of the hands of Cardinal when Cardinal's in a position to score runner inside Maynard Lewis nice looking play for the sophomore from Terre Haute Indiana he did a great job coming off the bench in the last round Gus I'll tell you what there's been more offense in this game I think than either one of us <laughs> anticipated no question Dwayne Dwayne guarded by Smith starts on the wing First shot deep in the corner. <laughs> Cardinal just hit him in the nose. Backdoor Bryant traveling. And subs coming in. For Wisconsin, Roy Boone, Jr. from Madison. Also, Trevon Davis, a sophomore from Summit, Illinois. And Allison takes a seat. Neither coach uncomfortable going to his bench. And remember, we're at 5,000 feet in altitude here. And that has been a significant factor in the two previous games that we had on Thursday. The benches of Purdue and Wisconsin really performed well. And I think were a big advantage for those two teams in their win. Robinson, Cornell, Kirkhoff, Smith, Cardinal. Cardinal in the corner. And he gets the timeout. Or does he? Oh, he, they call traveling. Unable to get the timeout. Looked like he signaled for it. But didn't get it. And that is the fourth turnover of the game for the Boilers. 16-11. With Smith now battling inside against Bershaw. Kirkhoff. And a foul. Dwayne Dwayne. Commits his first. And that's a good foul by Dwayne. Gene Cady asking for an intentional foul because Dwayne just simply flopped on top of Kirkhoff, prevented Kirkhoff from making a pass down the court to a Mike Robinson who was wide open for a layup. So Purdue with four turnovers and Wisconsin with three. Wisconsin has been successful getting the ball inside against with the dribble against this Wisconsin defense. Cardinal draws the foul and Willis wills rather with the tough foul on Cardinal. Really raked him across the face. Get complete play-by-play -play coverage of all the games in the live scoreboard for the fastest coverage online. Click, click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. 16-11, 12 10 to go. First half of play. Gus Johnson, Dan Bonner with you, along with Beth Moen. Now Cardinal. They swing it inside Robinson. Nobody home. We talked before the game about the job that Kowski has been doing, banging inside and preventing easy passes. That time it was Penny, who's nominally a backcourt player, doing a great job fronting Mike Robinson down low. Wills. Davis stripped into the hands of Penny. Now Davis on the hop down the lane. And a whistle. Offensive foul against the Badgers. 11.47 to go, 16-11. And welcome back to Albuquerque. And let's take a look at the data bank. Since 1985, the lowest seeds to advance to the final four, 86 and 11, LSU. How about Villanova in 1985, a number eight? And one of these two teams is going to get into that list because Wisconsin, of course, is an eight. And Purdue is a six. Bershaw on the bench and the shooting percentages. Wisconsin, six of nine. Purdue, five of seven. Much higher than anyone would have guessed with the way these two teams can guard you. 71 and 67 percent. But the Badgers are four of four from the three-point line. Purdue's done a pretty good job so far getting inside that defense with the dribble. Cardinal quiet offensively so far. No points. Robinson has four, forces it up and turns it over. Cardinal on the backside can't keep it in bounds. 
Almost stripped Boone. And he can't keep himself in bounds either, and that's pretty <laughs> typical of Brian Cardinal. I think the best line of this tournament was Kelvin Sampson's, the Oklahoma coach, about Brian Cardinal when he said, you know, the guy wears knee pads, and when somebody wears knee pads, you, <laughs> you know what he has in mind. There's no question about it. As a matter of fact, if you look on the floor, he's the only player with knee pads on. Now Kelly finds Penny. Bryant is back in the game for Wisconsin. Bershaw can't hold on, knocked out of bounds by Robinson. So on the floor for Wisconsin, Kelly, Bryant in the backcourt, along with Penny, Kowski, and Vershaw. That's a nice job by Lewis to get out there and defend that three. Penny catches you. Vershaw with the offensive rebound and the stick back. 18 to 11. Bershaw with four. That's two offensive rebounds by Wisconsin, and they've converted both of them into baskets. Now Robinson, back door, knocked away by Kelly. And a tough job for Jerron Cornell, who has been a slow starter in the tournament thus far, especially in the first two games, got off early in the third game, but he draws Kelly, who's the best defensive guard in the Big Ten. And Kelly, the hard thing about Kelly is getting the ball against him. He's really good at batting the ball away when you're trying to pass it to his man, but there's that penetration again, Gus. Lewis, strong to the basket. 18-13, approaching the 10-minute mark of the first half of play. Lewis quickly on Bryant. Skip pass to Penny. Knocked away and stolen by Cunningham. That was just great anticipation by Cunningham leaving Kelly. Robinson in the low post draws the double. That's they great. Reverse it. Lewis rips it. That is great patience against that double team. Robinson did not act like the ball was heated to 600 degrees and try to get rid of it right away. He held the ball, let the double team come till he spotted the open man and made a great pass. That's how you attack that double team. Somebody's open when that double team comes. Seven points for Lewis. Knocked away, Cardinal on the deck, and he gets it to Cornell. Boilers get tied up with the deuce. Ron remaining patient on the offensive side of the basketball. Takes the deep three. And hits. And the Boilers take a one-point lead. Purdue now three of three from downtown. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed over $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. What you've got to do against this double team, here's the double team right here, and it's Kowski coming to set the double team. And when Kowski comes, Wisconsin is going to guard this area. This area is going to be open. And what Robinson does is wait for the double team. Wait, wait, wait. He's not panicking. He finds that open area. And Lewis does a great job being ready to shoot as he catches the ball. Robinson has to do a couple of things. Number one, he's got to recognize who's coming to double team. If it's one of the big guys, then that means they're cutting off the lane. One of the perimeter people is going to be open. You just have to wait for it, and he did. 19-18, Vershaw, guarded by Smith, now backing his way down. Here's a double. Wills for 19. And the rebound goes to Smith. And even though Wills can shoot that from out there, if you're Purdue, that's the shot you want Wisconsin to take. They only shoot 42% on the year. You don't want to give them dunks. You don't want to give them layups. Make them shoot it from the perimeter. So a foul called on Smith. As don't he want... leaned into Wills, and Gene Cady can't believe that. I think he threw an elbow at him. He did throw an elbow at him. You want to be physical with Wisconsin, but if you're going to do stuff like that, you want to do it in a pack down on the inside where the referee can't see it. Six turnovers now for Purdue. Danny, I'm surprised to hear that from you. Uh, that's what I've heard, Gus. There's certainly no <laughs> personal knowledge on my part. That's what I've heard. Now Kelly 
Gershaw in the pivot, back door, Boone loses it, out of bounds, we head the other way. Interesting play, Cornell had a fistful of Boone's jersey. No question that Cornell really got away with one, and Dick Bennett's upset about it. Boone was open, but Cornell held him by the jersey and then knocked him down. Approaching the eight-minute mark of the first half of play, 19-18. Now Cornell from the parking lot. Loose ball, foul called on Robinson over the back. Timeout on the floor. 7.56 to go, first half of play, one-point game in Albuquerque. The game summary, both teams shooting a high percentage, especially from the three-point line. And I think that's the most surprising statistic in this particular game, the team shooting so well, and they're both such dynamite defensive squads. I, I didn't expect that. So the score, 19-18, Purdue on top of Wisconsin. We'll take the offense. Absolutely. I think it's probably causing Dick Bennett some heartburn, though. Kelly brings the ball up the floor along with Linton, Wills, Vershaw, and Bryant. Bryant hard around the screen, cut off by Cornell. Now Kelly. Purdue defense has done a nice job forcing turnovers. Seven Wisconsin turnovers thus far. Skip fast to Wills. 11 to shoot. Now Bryant with a good look. It's short, tracked down by Wills, and a new shot clock for the Badgers. Brian really didn't get his feet set that time. Nice job by Cornell to run at him. Man to man for Purdue. And this game is every bit as physical as we thought it would be. Here's a double. Vershaw. Up top, Linton wide open. <laughs> Purdue trying to get Wisconsin some of its own medicine, but the Badgers making him pay. Vershaw is a very difficult guy to double team because he is such a good passer. Leads the team. In assists, four per game. Here's a pick and roll. Cunningham on the wheel. Picks up the dribble. 12 to shoot. Cornell. When Kelly closed really quickly. Smith. Got a great look. Too strong. Wills with the rebound. What great blocking out on the inside by Wisconsin. 21-19. 6 and 25 to go here in the first half of play. Backdoor Bryant blocked by Cornell. No call. Great recovery for Jerron Cornell. You don't realize what an effective inside player Jerron Cornell can be. Bryant going to have a very difficult time getting to the basket against him. Cardinal takes the three. And out of bounds. Wisconsin really likes to run the back door play, but as Bryant goes along the baseline, watch Cornell number 22 close on him very quickly and get the block shot. Vershaw does a great job finding him on the inside, but Cornell just too quick off his feet for Bryant. That's a great job by Cornell to not give up when Bryant goes back door. You stay close to that guy, good things can happen defensively. Bryant, nine points, three of four from the three point line. Takes a seat, so Kelly Linton. Along with Kowski, Vershaw, and Dwayne Dwayne. And it's interesting in Dick Robinson's substitution pattern, he's always keeping at least one good three point shooter in the game. Count the basket, blocking foul. Oh, wow, that's a big call. That's Cardinal second, isn't it? Remember, the rule on a block charge is that the defender has to have both feet on the floor facing the dribbler. Cardinal does not. He very clearly moves in underneath after Kelly leaves the floor. Kelly has not shown the willingness to go to the basket in this game. I think he surprised Cunningham out on the perimeter. Boy, Jay Price, assistant coach, and Gene Cady, the head coach, they're very upset with that call. But Cardinal did not establish his defensive position before Kelly left the floor. Kelly only averages five points a game, six during the tournament. And McQuay comes back into the game. Cardinal takes a seat with 5.49 to go in the first half of play. Two fouls, no points. Now that means Cardinal's got two personal fouls and McQuay has two personal fouls. So the front line for Purdue 
Those foul problems starting to add up. Kelly misses the free throw. And how about that Wisconsin defense? Cardinal hasn't scored. He's their leading scorer. So again, they've taken the opposition's leading scorer right out of the game from an offensive standpoint. And actually, they've taken him right out of the game completely because now he's on the bench with two fouls. Mike Robinson oh, he walked on the 15-footer and travel. Seven turnovers for the Boilers. Tuesday on CBS, it's an all-new Jag. Arm thinks he's got a big case all sewed up until Mac calls a surprise witness, his girlfriend. An all-new Jag Tuesday on CBS. Dick Bennett very pleased with his team's comeback. They turned the ball over a couple times and fell behind. You see seven turnovers for each team, but Wisconsin has sort of righted the ship here in the last couple of possessions. Kershaw off the dribble. Reach in foul on Robinson. Robinson's doing a good job trying to put pressure on him, but I don't care who you are if you cannot get that close to a guy who hasn't given up his dribble yet. So Robinson called for his second. McQuay, Cardinal, Robinson, all with two fouls. And Vershaw heads to the free throw line to shoot one and one. It's just a natural reaction. Some guy starts by you, you put your hands out, and he put both hands on him, and that was the call. And he misses the front end. The rebound goes to Lewis. 23-19. So the Badgers missing a couple opportunities at the free throw line. Cunningham. Fade away. Delaney, Delaney rips it down. Tough, tough shot. And that was a quick shot, too. So now Purdue's got to go down and play defense against Wisconsin for 30 seconds. First shot. The kick. Linton travels. So both teams having problems. Eight turnovers for Wisconsin. And seven for Purdue. Dick Bennett asking Maurice Linton just what he was doing out there because he wasn't really going to accomplish anything by penetrating just a little closer to the basket. I think they wanted to get the ball back outside and take it around the other way. Cunningham, five-second call. Great defense by the sophomore from Summit, Illinois, Travon Davis. Davis did a great job keeping pressure on the ball, but the other four Wisconsin Badgers completely cutting off the Purdue guys trying to come to the ball and get it. I'll tell you what, if you're Purdue, somebody's got to run up to him and take the ball right out of his hands. Now Davis into the front court, guarded by Cunningham. Robinson's got to be careful. Inside, Kowski power dribble. Count it. And this young man, I tell you what, he came to play. <laughs> he's come to and play. And he's made his mark on the defensive end. He has done a great job keeping the ball away from the opposition inside, guys, for three games, now four. 25-19, Mike Robinson spinning. Loose ball. And a whistle and foul, Dwayne Dwayne. Fouling Maynard Lewis. Now, Dick Bennett is not angry with the officials. Dick Bennett is talking to his team because they didn't block out Maynard Lewis. So, Dwayne picks up his second. The young man from the Sudan. 3.57 to go, first half of play, 25-19. Three fifty seven to go first half of play Wisconsin up by six coming up on Pennzoil at the half Greg Gumbel Clark Kellogg and special guest Bobby Crimmins will preview the Midwest regional final between Michigan State and Iowa State and they'll talk to the Spartans head coach Tom Izzo great point guard matchup everybody knows about the All-America Mateen Cleves but folks this Jamal Tinsley young man from Brooklyn New York he can go. Did a number on Earl Watson and the Bruins from UCLA in the last round. So our score here, 25-19, under four to play. Got a quick look at Brian Cardinal seated on the bench. Now the one time this year that Purdue did beat Wisconsin, Cardinal had 26 points, but he's on the bench, no points and two fouls. Carson Cunningham along with Smith, Robinson, McQuay, and Cornell. Cornell very quiet offensively. Linton working very hard inside against Robinson. Now Smith in the corner. 
Boy, what a great defensive job by Kelly to force Smith to get up the ball and then react back to Cornell. Cunningham trying to create. Turns, stripped, loses it. Out of bounds, last touched by the Badgers with 2.7 to shoot. Wisconsin has held Purdue scoreless for the last five minutes of the game, and one of the reasons is they're getting great position defense on in, inside. Linton forces Robinson into a very difficult catch. Lobbed inside, McQuay draws the foul on Kowski. Great, great recognition by Mike Robinson because McQuay probably the best leaper on the floor. There's no question about that. And Dick Bennett is, again, a little bit disgusted with his players because you have to anticipate that particular play. Not really enough time on that clock to do much else. Two shots, so McQuay. His brother Gary in a Chicago hospital with leukemia. Gary formerly a player here with Purdue. And he wears Gary's number on his shooting hand, so every time he hits a jump shot, he's waving hello to his brother in Chicago. And those two points are a wave hello and in fact two waves hello and two points and that's exactly what Purdue needed. That breaks a five and a half minute scoreless streak. 25 21. Man to man for Purdue. Linton travels again. That's the second time he's done that. And Coach Bennett, little upset on the sideline. Nine turnovers for the Badgers. Wisconsin shooting the ball at a 58% rate, but they're only ahead in the game by four because they have turned the ball over those nine times, Gus. Very un Wisconsin like basketball in terms of those turnovers. They only average 11 turnovers per game. And they have nine in the first half. Under three to play. Cunningham guarded by Bryant around the corner and a foul. Cunningham is not the quickest guy on the Purdue team, but he used his strength. He's got a sneaky quick. Absolutely. Though. He's very creative with the basketball. Smith takes a seat. There's Carson, the pride of northern Indiana, transferred from Oregon State. Cornell. Cornell is a guy that Purdue hopes they can get going a little bit offensively, but Kelly's done an outstanding job. Cunningham down the lane, stripped away and out of bounds. We'll head the other way. A little too creative for Carson Cunningham. A little too creative for Gene Cady, certainly. Cunningham coming down the lane, and Wisconsin does a great job stepping in. And that's a nice job by Bryant to reach in and tip the ball away. But Vershaw stepping in caused Cunningham to come one step back toward Bryant. Almost a steal. Robinson with a hand on it. And he can't hold on. Mike Ro Robinson, some good anticipation there. And Robinson has to be careful because he's playing with two personal fouls. 2.23 to go. First half of play. The West Regional Final. Wisconsin Purdue, the winner heading to Indianapolis. Vershaw stolen away. Cornell. Jump stop, 15 footer, rims out, and a foul. Kirkhoff with the push. Wisconsin does a great job getting back on defense. It's very hard to get a run out basket against the Badgers, and that time Kelly got back very quickly, forced Cornell into the jump shot, which he missed. And when you're in a disadvantage situation like that, that's what a coach tells you to do. Don't give them the layup, force the jump shot, because the jump shot is obviously the more difficult of the two selections. So John Bryant at the line, nine points. And gets the first to go. Young man averaging 16 points a game during the NCAA tournament. Averaged seven points a game during the regular season. He stepped up. Second shot off the back rim. Safe from going out of bounds by McQuay. And Wisconsin now one for five from the free throw line. So they're in a position where they can have a pretty comfortable lead in this game, except for the turnovers and not hitting the free throw. Mike Robinson across the lane. Big time move. 
Well, the young man from Peoria, Illinois. Wisconsin defense just not quite ready to go, and Robinson just penetrates right by. Boone out there swats at the ball. You've got to move your feet and cut Robinson off. Watch Boone just reaches in and swats at it. You've got to go ahead and move your feet. Number 32, Boone's got to move his feet and get in front of Robinson. He didn't do it. Robinson get, gets the basket and draws the foul. Mike Robinson, whose father played collegiate basketball at Southwest Missouri State, one of their all-time leading scorers. And he adds the free throw. Conventional three-point play, two-point game. Now here's the full court pressure being applied by the Boilers. They're going to press in man-to-man -man and then back off. Here's a jump. One forty-eight to go. Kelly. Boom. Seventeen foot jump shot is good. Twenty-eight twenty-four. Now Wisconsin gets back into the zone. Cornell. Rebounded inside by Kowski. Borkowski can go up he and goes get it up too. There, man. Third rebound of the game for Kowski. 28-24. Purdue trying to extend the man-to-man -man defense. Good aggressive job by Kirkhoff. Kelly popping out. Up top, Kowski on the hop. Short, and McQuay with the rebound over the back ball on Kowski. With 56.8 to go in the first half of play. And a second foul on Kowski. Cardinal on the bench with two fouls. Now the foul starting to affect, affect Wisconsin. Wisconsin Kowski has been very effective with his physical play on the inside, but he might have to back off just a little bit early in the second half since he's already got two fouls. So McQuay. At the free throw line, shooting one and one. And it's short. Boom, down the lane, spins. Loose ball, knocked out of bounds. McQuay and Robinson. Went can't, up for it at the same time. You can't fault that kind of hustle. You've got to go after the basketball. Now, I don't think Wisconsin or Purdue is all that upset with Boone shooting the ball. Boone only a 32% shooter on the year. Boone in the corner. He'll test that down the lane. Off the window, hard and in. And Mike Robinson took a risk right there. Gene Cady wanting to know how come no charge was called, but Robinson very nearly got his third foul. 20-second timeout, Boilers. Two games, the Badgers have held the Boilermakers to 24 and 22 points in the first half of play. So the defense working for Wisconsin. And it was interesting, this game started out with some offensive fireworks, but the thing has settled down into what we expected, and that is a very difficult defensive struggle. And in that kind of a struggle, Wisconsin, who has nine second-chance points, has really helped themselves on the offensive board. Shot clock turned off, 11 to go on the game clock. Cunningham picks up the dribble, and it's run over by Boone. First foul on Boone. And that is a very good call by the official. Cunningham was backing up, and Boone has to stay in his position to force Cunningham to walk. Just because Cunningham backs up, you can't put your body on it. So Cunningham at the free throw line has five points first trip and he has a very interesting way of shooting the ball at the free throw line. He's from northern Indiana learned how to shoot free throws by using the Virgil Sweet free throw shooting method which is taught in northern Indiana in that Valparaiso area. One year Valpo the high school and the college number one in the nation in free throw shooting. Watch how he holds the basketball. And he gets the first one to fall. And whatever you call the method, it's effective. Absolutely. The result <laughs> is very successful for Purdue. Skip Collins teaches it now in northern Indiana. The 
free throw shooting. Purdue four of five. Wisconsin one of five. And only 8.8 .8 seconds remaining in the half. Wisconsin doesn't usually score that quick. Both free throws good. In the game now, Kenny Lowe, a freshman from Gary. For the Boilers, full court pressure now. Here's Boone, head of steam, into the front court, double clutches, got his own rebound, and a whistle and foul. So Kirkhoff called for a second. An absolutely outstanding job by Boone to get the ball quickly into the front court. He lets it go, and the ball comes right back to him. Watch as he leans in. Nobody blocks him out. He leans in, and he's just allowed to continue right to the basket. A dangerous play for Mike Robinson, who has those two personal fouls. Boone, a 75% shooter, misses the first. Wisconsin now one of six from the free throw line, and one of those misses was a front end of a one and one. So the Badgers really missing the opportunity for a significant number of points at the line in the first half. Young man from Madison went to a junior college, transferred back home, gets the second. Robinson, the inbounder, with 2.1 to go. Into the front court, Allison makes the catch. seconds can be. Mike Robinson makes an absolutely outstanding pass. The length of the court, Allison has to control it, and he does a great job against defensive pressure, getting the thing off. Remember, the clock does not start until he touches the ball. Great patience. He's not hurrying, but he's able to control the ball despite the pressure. This is an outstanding pass. My goodness, and he goes up and gets it, and he has enough time to stick it in the goal. Now let's go down to Beth Mowens. Well, thanks a lot, Gus. Coach, what's the biggest adjustment here for you now at the half? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's the biggest adjustment you've got to make at the half? Is it trying to stop their dribble penetration? Uh, it's uh, we got to uh, take better care of the ball for one thing. I think we're a little careless. We certainly got to put more free throws down when we get that opportunity. And that's the end of the first half with a score: Wisconsin on top of Purdue, 31-28. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Merrill Lynch, Pontiac Grand Prix, the Intel Pentium 3 processor, and by Enterprise Rent-A-Car.